Welcome back everyone to Learning Meditation. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to be solving problem 16145, okay? So it says, a ride in an amusement park consists of a rotating arm AB having a constant angular velocity, angular velocity AB equal to 2 radians per second, point, um, point A and a car mounted at the end of the arm which has a constant angular velocity omega prime is equal to negative 0.5 in the k direction radians per second, measured relative to the arm. At the instant shown, determine the velocity and acceleration of the passenger at sea. All right, so what do we have in here? We have in here is, uh, we have this ride in the amusement park and we have our point A, which is attached to our point B, right, by this arm. And we have this guy pointed at sea. And what we're trying to determine is basically, hey, what's the velocity and what's the acceleration of this passenger, which is located at this point C, okay? so. The first thing that I always like to do in all this type of problems, again, let's just write our arguments. So we're going to have the angle of velocity, AB, is going to be equal to 2 radians per second, okay? So now, uh, what is the direction of this angular velocity? Well, if we use our right hand rule, right, and we're looking down at our, like, at our paper, we will see that this is in the same direction as my fingers, meaning then it's in a positive k direction, okay? And then we're also given that the angular velocity prime is equal to negative 0.5 in the k direction as well, and this is radians per second, okay? So these are the only two givens, and we're in chapter 16, so we're gonna utilize our chapter 16 equations and our way of tracking of basically aiming at this problem is going to be that hey I can use relative motion in order to find the velocity of c and the acceleration of c and I have these two key points which are a and b okay so now my goal in this exercise is going to find the velocity and the acceleration of b so then we can use our relative um, equations relative motion equations to find c and the equations that we're going to utilize for this problem are these four equations in here, okay? So again, we're going to start by trying to find the velocity of b, which we don't have yet. And if we utilize equation 9 from chapter 16, that's going to be equal to the velocity of, uh, I'm sorry, the velocity of b is going to be equal to the angular velocity, omega ab, cross product, the distance between a and B, okay, which I'm going to call uh, B real relative to A. Now, we don't have this distance yet, we do have the angular velocity, but the distance we can find it with this 10 feet and our angle between A and B, okay? So, let's find that distance from B. Uh, from uh, A to B, and that's going to be equal to, well, we have the hypotenuse is equal to 10 feet multiplied by the cosine of 30, that should give me the I component plus 10 multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees, and that should give me the J component, okay? And if we plug this into our calculator, we will find out that this distance is equal to 10 cosine of 30, that will give me 8.66 in the i direction, and then 10 sine of 30, that should give me 5 in the j direction, okay? And just so we are constant with all the units, is going to be in fit. I'm going to move this towards my side, since this is kind of like a work I did on the side, for this velocity. So now we can say, hey, the velocity of V is going to be our angular velocity, which is two in the K direction, cross product, the distance we just found, which is 8.66 in the I direction, plus five in the J direction, okay? And if we do this cross product, well, I always like to do just the multiplication. So we got the two times 8.66, that will give me 17.32 but then we have the k multiplied by the i that will give me in the j direction okay and then we have the same thing 2 times 5 that will give me 10 and we have k times the j will give me a negative i direction okay so 
basically if we put it in order we got negative 10 in the i direction plus 17.32 in the uh, j direction and the units for this well its velocity should be feet per second okay so now we have the velocity of b let's try to find out our acceleration of b okay and this acceleration of b we're going to utilize this equation 18 which is going to be equal to the acceleration of a plus the angular acceleration of a b if we want to name it cross product the distance between b and a minus the angular velocity um, mu multiplied by the distance between b and a all right so why is the reason I'm choosing to find my acceleration of B relative to my acceleration of A, right? So um, the reason for that is that this ride at point A, basically my point A is no moving. So the acceleration of this point A is equal to zero. So that was a big thing to find out. So we have that the acceleration of A is equal to zero. Then we're going to have plus the angular acceleration between A and B, well, again, there is no uh, angular acceleration. And the reason for that is that we have a constant angular velocity, meaning that if we do the derivative, which is the acceleration of the velocity will be equal to zero. All right, so since we have a zero angular acceleration, this cross product entirely becomes zero. And then we're going to have minus the angular velocity which we found to be two well it was given i'm sorry not found in here but we're going to square it and we're going to multiply it by the distance between uh, between b and a that we found before which is 8.66 in the i direction plus 5 in the j direction all right so this will give me the answer of so this two square will give me four and we have a minus so all of these become negative okay so we're going to have negative uh four times 8.66 that gives me 34.64 and that'll be in the other directions minus four times five that will give me 20 in the j direction and just because this one is the acceleration should be in feet per second squared, okay? So we found the velocity of B, acceleration of B. Let's go ahead and try to find our actual answer that we want, which is the velocity of C. So the velocity of C is going to be equal to, and I'm going to utilize this equation, uh, equation 26, which is going to be equal to the velocity of B, which is why the reason why we're trying to find it plus our angular acceleration between these two cross product the distance between c and b plus the velocity between c and b okay so let's just start by saying hey the velocity of b i found it before and is equal to negative 10 in the i direction plus 17.32 in the j direction now the next question is what is this angular velocity okay so the angular velocity velocity for these two guys is going to be the addition between the angular velocity of a b and this angular prime velocity okay so if we do that we're going to have that the angular velocity is going to be equal to 2 in the k direction minus 0 0.5 in the k direction as well and this will give me a total of 1.5 in the k direction okay so we're going to have plus 1.5 in the k direction cross product the distance between c and b and it's the distance of c relative to b so the distance of c relative to b is basically going down these two feet and going down in this case is negative 2 in the j direction okay so and then we have plus the velocity between c and b so now this is not angular velocity this is just the velocity between these two points and if we check in a later moment 
where maybe c is here or here or here, we have the same distance, meaning our velocity is zero relative in between these two guys. Let's try to solve that finally for this velocity of c. Now that we have all the numbers, I'm just going to write down all of these equally since we're going to first need to solve this cross product. So again, first multiply the numbers. We got 1.5 times 2. That will give me 3. And then we have the multiplication of k times the j. That will give me a negative. But since the 2 is negative, negative and negative will cancel out each other and we get a positive uh, 3 in the k direction. No, I'm sorry, not in the in the k direction. K and j will give me a negative i. But then with the negative, we become positive i. Sorry for that mistake. And then we're going to have that if we combine by terms, we combine this 10 and this positive 3 will give negative 7 in the i direction plus 17.32 in the j direction. And all of these are going to be in feet per second. And just like that, we found our first answer for this problem. The second answer is going to be finding our acceleration. So we got the acceleration of C is going to be equal to, and we're going to utilize this relative very long equation, which is going to be then, um, let me move some things up so we don't have to keep scrolling back up and forth. Let me put this up. All right, so we're going to have, hey, the acceleration of C is going to be equal to the acceleration of B plus the acceleration cross product, the distance between C and B plus our angular velocity cross product, a cross product, which is the angular velocity again cross product, the distance between C and B, plus two times our uh, angular velocity cross product, the velocity of B, oh, I'm sorry, of C relative to B, plus the velocity, the acceleration, so many mistakes today, of C relative to B. Okay, so now that we have this, we can start working out well. We know the acceleration of B because we found it before and it's right here. So negative 34.64 in the I direction minus 20 in the J direction. Then we're going to do the cross product of the angular acceleration. Well, again, we found out that these angular velocities are constant, meaning the angular acceleration is equal to zero. So this whole thing becomes a zero. So plus zero plus and we're going to have these two cross product together so we're going to have the 1.5 that we found before k cross product at 1.5 k having a cross product between the distance between c and b which we found to be negative 2 in the j direction plus 2 times our 1.5 in the k direction cross product, the velocity of C relative to B, of B relative to C, I'm sorry. Uh, that's going to be equal to zero. Therefore, this entire thing becomes zero plus the acceleration of C and B. Well, if the velocity is zero, the acceleration in this case is also zero. Okay, which is very good. We have two zeros at the end. I'm going to try to keep solving for this problem. So we got 30, negative 34.64 in the i directions minus 20 in the j direction. All right, so this cross product in here is the same as this cross product over here. And we knew that the answer was 3i. So basically what we're doing is a 1.5k cross product 3i, okay? So again, this parenthesis becomes this 3 in the i direction. And now when we're doing this cross product at the bottom, we're going to have 1.5 times 3. That will become a 4.5. And we're going to do k cross product of i. That will give me a positive j. Okay? So we 
if we combine by terms, we're going to have negative 34.64 minus 15.5 in the j direction. And all of this is going to be in feet per second squared. And just like that, we found our second answer for this problem. So I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.